you blog? Do you have an eBay star? Have you written reviews? Have you clicked on an ad while viewing an interactive map? If so, all reports suggest that you're part of what is being called Web 2.0. And without even a word about Web 2.1, 2.5, we're already talking about Web 3.0, or what Web 3.0 will be. One definition from the Wikipedia discussion tab calls Web 1.0 the readable phase of the World Wide Web. Static, flat data. Web 2.0? The writable phase, interactive data, social networking. Web 3.0, the executable phase, dynamic applications, interactive services, machines talking to machines. Think TiVo, recording programs based on preferences. Maybe your machine can search the web and read what it finds to you. Maybe the machine can seek out that college book list, find used copies at a low price, pay for them and have them shipped to you. What's to come in the foreseeable future? I'm Michael Singer here to talk about Web 2.0 and Web 3.0. I have some distinguished guests here in the studio. Uh, from IBM, I have David Barnes. And from Stevens Institute, I have Michael Zermulin. And on the phone with us today, uh, from New Venture Partners, I have Steven Sokoloff. Uh, so, David, tell us, what is this all about? There's a lot of people skeptical. Web 2.0, what, they might say. First of all, I think there's a little bit of versionitis here. It's an evolution of the web, so there's no way you can stake in the ground and say, this is 2.0 or this is 1.0. I think it's better to say this is old and this is new. This is the way we used to do it and the way we're doing it now. The web 2.0 definitions, Tim O'Reilly and others did the best job of defining it, but they're still loose because it's both society, how we do things socially, and then the new technology that makes our browser seem like our rich internet application, almost like a desktop application. So there's no hard definition, but I'll tell you the 3.0 definition, we're beyond, the part, of, part of Web 2.0 is beyond the software release cycle. No more software release cycle. Google's almost always in beta. It says so up there. Right. Right? They slipstream in new features. And so it's an evolution. It's not just a hard release level. I don't believe it ever will be. Why no 2.1, 2.5? Why are we going to go from 2.0 to 3.0? Because, the <coughs> one, there's no major corporation that's going to release a piece of software that says that. And in fact, often this isn't about a piece of software. If somebody came up with a new idea, it's so much about innovation, not the software that runs it and somebody else will run with that new idea, and then another company will make it better, and the more people that use it, the better it gets. Another Web 2.0 premise, right? And so um, it's pure evolution, and it will continue to be an evolution. So I think more of the, the way it is now and the way it used to be is probably a better definition. Uh, Michael, some comments on Web 2.0, uh, what you've seen? I think we're at a stage where the original ideas that were behind the web are beginning to be realized because the technology standards have evolved to a stage where they are really mature. The very first web browser that was written allowed users to create web pages and to edit web pages. That was the first vision. But then the commercial browsers that came up uh, converted to a read-only format, and that went on for a while. So new technology was invented. We have Ajax, we've got Ruby on Rails, we've got um, new front-end innovation uh, at the user interface level that allows users to participate in the creation of the web. So what we have in terms of blogs and wikis, etc., is uh, the technical realization of the initial vision. And Web 2.0 is a branding term for this new group of technologies and the social applications that we can design with them. Web 3.0 is management by magazine at the moment. Okay, <laughs> like amazing. That. And Steven Sokoloff, uh, is there money to be made in Web 2.0, Web 3.0? Yes, Web 2.0 and Web 3.0, to me, it's, it's a much more immersive use of the web. It's, it's the web becoming really a more natural part of our day-to-day -day lives, easier to use, and providing um, a very immersive functionality to us. And by doing so, I think it is going to uh, bring many more people into the web for more time, which is going to create additional economies in communication, and, and uh, I think it's going to also create economies in creation and innovation through the web, and I think it's going to create great uh, efficiencies in, in the way both consumers and, and enterprises operate. 
Are there ticker symbols that you would say these are 2.0 companies right now? I think Google is a 2.0 company. Um, and, and look at the market cap we've got there and, and look at what they're spending to build their franchise, you know, maybe towards a 3.0 world with acquisitions like YouTube. Are, are there any uh, places where you're actually putting money on the table right now because there's this promise of the future, promise of being a web 3.0 company, some upstart, or maybe part of a big company that you're looking to spin out? Yes, uh, several examples. You know, we've seen Salesforce.com become a huge success, and I think we're seeing more and more evolution along that path, and we've launched a company called Airversant, which is uh, a similar play uh, focused on field service organizations, looking at providing efficiencies for uh, delivery people, pickup, delivery, uh, field service, et cetera, where people can be located, routed, dispatched, uh, call, call orders and service orders managed. So that's one example of where I think the technology of of the internet and the the link of call it the wireless internet is uh, is enabling you know much more uh, easy and efficient and flexible use of the of the internet 